In this lesson, we'll be finishing off multi-axis positioning toolpaths. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a pocket clearing operation and simulate toolpaths to validate material removal. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example and let's finish off the operations we can in our multi-axis positioning part in this orientation. As is already mentioned, we have to remove this from our fixture, flip it over, face, and do a couple operations from the back side. But we're trying to get as much information as we can done from this position. So we've done pretty much everything with the exception of this pocket. So if we take a look at the current tool that we're using, this is going to be tool 5, which is our quarter inch end mill. Let's quickly hop into our tool library and validate the tools that we're using. So in this document, we have tool one, two, and three, which are spot drill and drills. Our tap is tool number four, and then five is a quarter inch end mill. If we go into our cloud library, notice that five is actually a chamfer mill. So what we want to do is make sure that we're not overriding a tool that's already in our library and already loaded in our machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is edit the tool parameters, and instead of making it tool number five, I'm going to make it tool number eight. As soon as I exit, everything should update properly, and if we check this, you'll notice that tool 8 updates, and we don't have to regenerate anything based on the tool number change. But we're going to continue to utilize that tool, and we're going to go ahead and create a two-axis pocket operation, or a 2D adaptive clearing, or even a 3D adaptive clearing. Now, in the case of our geometry, it's pretty straightforward, so we can do a pocket operation, we can do pocket clearing, we have a lot of different options that we can explore. Since we haven't used pocket clearing yet, I'm going to go ahead and use that as my option. We're going to carry on with tool number eight. We're going to take a look at our geometry. And for our machining boundary, we can use a bounding box. We can use a silhouette. We can use a selection. And in this case, I want to use a selection and keep the tool inside of this area. I'm going to say OK with no other changes and see what the toolpath is that it creates. So keeping the tool in this area, notice that it's able to cut all the way to the bottom of our geometry. If we show the original stock, so if we come back in and we expand this and we show the stock, you can see that there's still going to be a lot of material left here. So we can actually extend that toolpath down a little bit farther. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go ahead and edit and change my heights. For the bottom height, I'm going to add a small offset of minus 0.125 which will extend the contour down a little bit more. In my passes section, I'm gonna turn off stock to leave because I wanna do both roughing and finishing. I don't have to worry about step downs because it's already calculated for me, but I can go ahead and say okay, allow it to recalculate with the new depth, and then we can turn off our stock, select our multi-axis setup, and simulate it one last time. I'm going to jump to the end because we've played through pretty much all of our toolpaths so far and just take a look at the results that we have. I'm going to hide the original part and just see what's left behind. So we still have the geometry that's holding it to our fixture. These small pieces should pop off no problem. And all the rest of the geometry has been machined. Now keep in mind when you look at this part, you wouldn't traditionally think multi-axis. But most use cases are going to be parts like this, where we're not creating some complex three-axis geometry on parts or getting into areas where it's really hard to get a tool into. We're going to be focusing on parts that really just speed up the process by rotating it around one or two axes. So again, this is a great example of what is seemingly a basic part, but it can be done very easily on a multi-axis machine. So from here, we will explore this part a little bit more later in our course, but for right now, we're going to go ahead and save this because we've explored most of our multi-axis positioning toolpaths. We've taken a look at positioning for drilling, and we've looked at multi-axis positioning for basic operations, such as 2D contours and even some adaptive clearing. So once you're done exploring this part, make sure that you save your file before moving on.